Joao Taxaria de Faria was a well-known Brazilian faith healer and spiritual surgeon. You probably know him as John of God. He came from a tiny village in Brazil. He referred to himself as a humble farmer. His mother read cards and had visions of Mother Mary. His father was an herbalist. At a young age, he started having visions and his spirit guides told him how to heal others. He referred to himself as a medium. After being recognized by many famous people, including Oprah, John of God enjoyed fame as a prominent faith healer. Many people experienced miracles at his hand. Unfortunately, there was a dark side as well, and over 300 women have now come forward and accused John of sexually assaulting them while he was supposed to be healing them. John of God now sits in prison, probably for the rest of his life, for his crimes. Everybody. Welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sister. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? It's our Monday case. It is. Yeah, it's going well. I, I've been wanting to do this case for a while, so I'm really glad we're getting to it. I, yeah. and, and I'm good. I, I probably spent a little too much time today playing ping pong. <laughs> with our kids uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah I'm a little sore but hey you know did you somebody's got to show them how it's done right right you definitely well, do all. have to show them how it's done well good yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you got to go I I did not get to go yeah I'm currently quarantined yeah. potentially with COVID again mm. you guys I'm sick of this shit Oh, we've had it with COVID. Had yeah. it. We're sick and we're awaiting test results. So. Yeah. I didn't get to go. Yeah. <laughs> to play ping pong with the kids, but. I know. That's okay. I don't want to be giving anybody COVID. That's for sure. No. And we were talking about it because, uh, you know, Mars heads off to college this week and that uh, yes. it would be oh a crisis gosh. if she had COVID and couldn't go. Yeah. Oh, my hell. I know. I, that was that was one of my first thoughts was, holy crap, <laughs> she's trying to leave for college. Holy cow. I know. Ugh, so, such is life these days. It's really getting old. It is. It's getting very old. But it's going to be okay, too. It of is. course. Yeah. Well, we um, we have a, a, for the metaphysical community, this is a very challenging case. Yeah. And, and yet, as far as like human trafficking and, um, you know, sexual assault and that kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. combating sexual assault, it's a very important one. And I don't mean that those two are at odds. They're not. It's just. No. This, this, this person. This person very difficult. So mm -hmm. today we are going to present our group case, which is we're, we're not cold reading anything. We're just presenting a case and discussing it. And we're going to talk about John of God. Yeah. Now you may or you may not know who John of God is. Yeah. If you spend so, any time in the new age community, you do. John of yes. God was deeply loved and revered. Yeah. For decades. Yes. He uh, is a Brazilian man. He was born on June 24th of 1942. You share a birthday. I know. You know I was that? very offended by that. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. So he worked for years, many, many decades as a medium and a psychic surgeon. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about that. Really as a healer. He is now a convicted sex offender and he is in prison. Mm -hmm. So... Um, as you can imagine, those are not great combos, right? No. So let me just tell you a little bit about his history. Let's just start there. He is um, from a place called Goyas. This is in Brazil. His last name is actually Faria. So that's what I'm going to use because his name is very difficult to um, pronounce. So I'm going to use Faria. Yeah. Jow, so, yeah. Yeah, he he is not a doctor. No, nope. he grew up as a farmer. Mm -hmm. 
he um so he didn't have any actual medical training no so he used to travel from village to village healing people doing mm-hmm. various kinds of healings and metaphysical work mm-hmm. and he grew Which, up with that a bit yeah this was his family was catholic yes. deeply catholic like the old baroque style of catholic where you prayed to different uh you know b- saints for various things and and believed yes. deeply in this in spiritual healing and yes. so what he was doing you know as a spiritual healer this was not unheard of this was actually something that other people did as well but right. uh, yeah. He was quite gifted at it and got to be pretty popular at what he was doing. Yeah, he did. And he um, he was told by a man named Chico Xavier. And Chico Xavier was um, also known as a spiritist and a medium mm-hmm. and yeah. quite famous at the time. And he told Faria that he should go to um, a little town called Abadiania. Mm-hmm. To, and this is where he would fulfill his mission. Yeah. So in 1978, uh, Feria went there and he performed his first healings there. He just, yeah. he sat outside in a chair Yep. near a road and, and started um, healing people for various illnesses and conditions and things. This um just grew and grew and grew to the point that he was actually seeing thousands of people a day mm-hmm. and then that's when he created his center so this was a, a healing center that people came from all over the world to go to oh yeah and it was called Gasa de Dome Inacio de Loyola mm-hmm. and it's it's been visited by millions of people seeking mm-hmm. different kinds of healing um, at the same time, he also owned a cattle ranch, which was about a thousand acres mm-hmm. um, and is actually valued at about two million rea- uh, reyes. Mm-hmm. Well, and his center was also acquiring hostels for people to stay in. Yes. And, you know, had created a storefront as well where they were selling crystals. And we actually, Christy and I both have crystals that were blessed by John of God. We do. I know. I do. Well, I'm unsure as to what to do with them. I know because I love them actually. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, you know, and they were really they were brought to us by dear friends, and so it's you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and then of course they were also selling their uh, their medication that they were making there. Right, and this is um, passion flower. So mm-hmm. he was prescribing the herb passion flower. To everyone, everyone that went there for any kind of healing, he sold passion flower mm-hmm. and wanted everyone to take it. Now, I wanted to explain what passion flower does. Um, cat, passion flower has a calming effect and it's mm-hmm. used for sleep, anxiety, um, stress, symptoms of ADHD, pain, and lots of other conditions. But really, what it is, is it is a sedative. Mm-hmm. And so everyone who went there got passion flower mm-hmm. and were encouraged to buy more and to continue to take it. And that's actually how he made most of his money was in selling the passion flower and the other items that he blessed mm-hmm. in his store. Oh yeah. People could make donations for the healings, but they weren't, there was no cost for them. No, but they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People. You could also work in one of his hostels. A lot Mm -hmm. of people would go and stay for several days and work. So clean rooms or cook or help transport people or, you know, a variety of things, donating your time in order to be there. And people did, you know. Some and people wealthy people did. came from all over the world and dropped tons and tons of money. The dude was, yeah. a, was a millionaire. He had a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In 2014, it was estimated that he was making about $10 million a year. Yeah. On what he was doing. Now, he had 
a pretty good sized staff of healing guides, he called right. them. Uh, if you were going to see him for a healing, you were assigned a healing guide who was basically in charge of you that would cart you around and help you or whatever. people would stay sometimes for a few days and uh -huh. be seen multiple times. Mm -hmm. And But uh, also he had a group of, he called them healing guides, I'm going to call them bodyguards, that surrounded him pretty much at all times. He got to yeah. where he was mostly unapproachable and bulletproof. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he literally had millions of people a year coming to see him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, people wanted to touch him. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it, it, it got real intense. Mm -hmm. This situation did. Right. Well, Oprah featured him twice. Yes, she did. And that is part of what really drove the, uh, the John of God mania, you know, but yeah. Oprah believed in the work he was doing. You she know, did. she did. Uh, as did other famous people that went yeah. to see him and saw him create miracles and saw him do amazing things and did amazing things for them. Right. And so as famous people started talking about him more, more and more people wanted to go there. I mean, who doesn't want a healing? You know, who doesn't, who's dying or has a family member that's dying? Who doesn't want to try to travel to Brazil and be healed? You know, yeah. it became really big and really out of hand. Yeah, it did. I mean, they, he actually started traveling to other places in the world, mm -hmm. paid huge amounts of money mm -hmm. to come and do um, like group sessions mm -hmm. in different places. But yeah, this grew, you know, he started out being very popular in Brazil and it grew to be a worldwide um, audience for oh, the yeah. things that he did. And, you know, people would, uh, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a John of God crystal bed, but that's oh, a big yeah. thing in the metaphysical community, these crystal mm -hmm. beds that have been blessed by John of God. And then people, you know, you can pay to just have time laying on the bed, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. We've known people that have done things like that. And, you oh, know, yeah. we, and I don't have any doubt in the power of the crystals themselves. Sure. You know, and they, well, and the lights. Yes. I mean, it's the, the far light. infrared light th therapy combined with crystal therapy. And people do get a lot of pain relief and yeah. a lot of like anxiety relief and stress relief from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do. Unfortunately, now they have that name attached to them, which will tell you why. Ain't nobody wants that anymore. Yeah. No. no. So, let me just tell you about what it's like to what it was like to go to his center. So um, yeah. people went there a lot of times for like three days mm -hmm. and they would be prescribed things like meditation and walks to a waterfall that was nearby mm -hmm. and to take the herbs that he, you know, recommended, which was the passion flower. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there were artifacts that people could buy. Mm -hmm. So then he also did um, spiritual or psychic surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there were two choices when it came to psychic surgery, visible mm -hmm. or invisible. So invisible was done on someone that was basically a proxy on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And you sat in a room and meditated while this surgery was performed on someone else mm -hmm. as their surrogate. Some people actually chose um, a visual operation where he operates without traditional anesthetic, but it's not, it's not cutting anybody. No, he uses, there are spiritual surgeons that do cut. Right. He was not, not one of them. Yeah. No. Um, and there's been a lot of debunking of psychic surgery over the mm -hmm. years. And you can go look that up and kind of how the, there's a whole sleight of hand thing that goes on with mm -hmm. that. Um, he says that he used energized mineral water and spiritual energies that were present. And I don't want to discount any of that because I believe in that and do that kind of work too. But I, I don't love the term surgery, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then people would meditate in another room that would help to bring more energy in during these surgeries. Um, sometimes he would do things like insert scissors or forceps into somebody's nose mm -hmm. or actually touch their eye with something mm -hmm. with, there were no anesthetics or antiseptics used. Right. The nose um, thing was actually pretty common. 
that he would put forceps up their nose and then twist them a certain number of times. Yeah, a lot of times based it was on whatever he was times. trying to get. Yeah. Yeah. So you can look up James Randy. James Randy has done um, a lot of debunking of psych psychic surgery. Um, but uh, psychic surgery, I, I think, was a small, not, not, this is not all that he did. He did right. a lot of energy healing with mm -hmm. people in mm -hmm. which he would, you know, assist them in healing themselves or some, you know, right. or, well, or as a proxy for someone else who wasn't there. Right. He was channeling an entity. Yes. They called it the entity, the entity. though he claimed it was three different uh, entities, depending on uh, the work he was doing. Right. But uh, it was that that's how they referred to it was the entity. And people in that area had gotten accustomed to asking the entities permission for all kinds of things before yeah. they built a house or a business or moved mm -hmm. or did various things. The entity was in charge. And his people will say that when he did a channeling, his countenance would totally change. And that after a channeling like that, he wouldn't remember any of it. Now, mm -hmm. I'll say I know other mediums that channel just like that, and mm -hmm. they don't remember any of it. No, I, that's I've never had that experience. But, I mean, that's yeah. he's certainly not the only one to do that. Oh, no, no, of course not. But one of the people he was channeling was a famous deceased doctor. Right, right. Yeah. So one of the, um, over time, he was actually arrested a few times mm -hmm. for practicing medicine without a license. And he actually did go to jail for that once. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it just didn't go very far because these kinds of practices were quite common in Brazil. Mm -hmm. He was not the only spiritual medium doing this kind of work at that oh, time. No. Not at all. And in fact, he was a little more tame than some of the others. Yes. Others were literally cutting incisions into people and stuff like that. So, you know, as far as that goes, he was a little more tame, except for this. So many people were coming to him. Yeah. But part of their problem in prosecuting him is that they didn't really have any witnesses because nobody wanted to speak out against him. And right. so many of the people that would have been witnesses were tourists. Right. So they were here they were, and then they gone were gone to another country. Yeah. And I mean, he he has been attributed to many miracles. There are many people who mm -hmm. say, I, I, I came in in a wheelchair. I walked out. You know, mm -hmm. I I had a brain tumor when I came in. I don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things. They're not necessarily provable, but those reports are out there. And there are thousands of them. Oh, yeah. So many of them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any doubt that he had some gifts. I'm sure he did. Something was happening. We know other people that were very gifted that uh, really went the wrong direction. You yes, know? that certainly, you know, that they don't have to be mutually exclusive. It seems like they would be, but they don't have to. Well, look at Chad um, Daybell. Right. You know? Yeah. Chad well, Daybell really he, did have a few gifts, but, uh, you know, he decided to be a murderer about it. Right. Yeah. Well, and he... So he was very good at the pageantry of it. Oh, yeah. And he people were so very convinced about who he was and what they could expect that when bad things happened with him, most people didn't dare say anything mm -mm. because it was so shocking mm -hmm. that something like this would happen in a healing session with John of God. You know, it's just yeah. not expected he also had um you know his healing guides who defended him and protected him and we know now that various women went to the healing guides and said something inappropriate had happened with him during a session and they foisted most of that off you know and said oh you just don't understand how this works or mm -hmm. he didn't he doesn't do things like that you know just mm -hmm. like you said earlier Katie, Lots tons of, of gaslighting. Gaslighting. Yeah. yeah and so people you know mostly i mean people saw this person as this tremendously revered and re respected mm -hmm. healer who's going to speak out against him right yeah so unfortunately 
what we know now is that all along while he was healing people, when he was in alone, alone in a room with a woman, and sometimes not, and I'll tell you about that, um, inappropriate sexual behavior and sexual assault was occurring as part of the healing. healing. Yeah. This was quite a common thing where yeah. he would force a woman to touch him or to actually that he would tell them that actually having sex with him was part of the healing. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times there was some real emotional abuse used where they he would say things like, you want your mother to get better. Don't you want to complete this healing? Yeah. You know, just terrible mm -hmm. abuse, abuse of, of power. Yeah, I was just going to say abuse of power. This is like the Bikram yoga guy, you know? Right. Yeah, it yeah, is. And some other spiritual leaders who have pulled shit like this, yes. uh, you know, and also not to... Uh, Forget that uh, his background is in what? The Catholic Church. Yes. Yeah. Now, the Catholic Church won't yes. claim him. No. Just in they, case won't, you're wondering. they won't claim him since he's but been it's in trouble. Part of that pattern. Yeah. They want everyone to be sure that this isn't their stuff that he's been doing. Right. But it is. So sometimes he would want to set the energy in a group of people. And when he would do that, he would tell them all that they had to close their eyes and keep their eyes closed very tightly. Mm -hmm. And he was going to set the energy, right? And if they opened their eyes, then they would be messing up the energy. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, sometimes what he was doing was walking up to women and sticking their hands down his pants mm -hmm. while he was setting the energy. Yeah. And again, they're in this position of not daring say anything, mm -hmm. um, of seeing him as an authority figure. I mean, the abuse of power in this situation is really bad. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of his crimes. Katie, I know you have some other things to mention as well. Mm -hmm. So eventually, 12 women initially alleged that he had abused them, and there was a case um, against him for that. Mm -hmm. That went out to the media, and that's when the media really got a hold of it, and then they couldn't ignore it anymore. Um, and it had, you know, this had been being ignored for a while already. Uh -huh. um, so the prosecutor's office in the state of Goyas in uh, Brazil actually had to create an email address and phone line so that they could receive more accounts from him because there were so many people calling. Once this went public that some women were willing to go public, then uh -huh. way more people. Apparently, yeah. in 30 hours after they set up that hotline, they had 200 complaints from nine different states in Brazil. Yeah. And two claims from outside of Brazil. And that has been part of the challenges. Not all of the claims are even from Brazil. They're from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, the abuse, they allege, started with victims as young as 14 his daughter Some, being one of them his daughter being one of them she did eventually speak out against him her name is Dalva and she did say that he sexually abused her all of her life until she ran away when she was 14 and she's and in her she, 40s now yeah that's how long this all went on yeah yeah so on the 12th of December 2018 they put out an arrest warrant for him. Um, on the 16th of December, he surrendered himself to the police. He he tried to run for a few days, but it didn't work very well for him. Mm -hmm. He's an incredibly uh, well-known person. You know, it wasn't like he was going to get away. But mm -hmm. some of his people um, tried to help him get away. Yeah. Well, there's also reports that he withdrew $10 million from the bank. Right, right before he'd hurt yeah. himself in. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to run, trying to do something with his money. And he just it just became very clear that he was not going to be able to. Mm -hmm. So the number of abuse ac accusations have now reached around 600. Mm -hmm. He has um, been in prison now since 2018. Mm -hmm. Uh, he also has spent some time in the hospital. 
mm-hmm. and then was went back to the prison. Yeah. His lawyers really tried to get him arranged on some kind of a house arrest kind of yes. situation because of his age. And apparently he has a bad heart. He's and the prosecutors and the judge were like, uh-huh. They were like, uh, no, you're a millionaire. You could yeah. go wherever. No, you're not going anywhere. We're not letting no. you have that chance. Yeah. He, he's currently sentenced to 63 years and four months. And there are still more cases pending against him. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the dude's not ever getting out. No. But, you know, one story I wanted to tell about him, because this tells you a little bit about his own hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. So in 2015, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. Yeah. And guess where he went? The a doctor. Yeah. A real doctor. Mm-hmm. He had surgery to mm-hmm. remove a malignant tumor from his stomach and five months of chemotherapy. Yeah. And he lied about that mm-hmm. and said he was hospitalized for a stomach hernia, but he never told anybody he had cancer. And he did not release publicly that he went through Western medical treatment for that cancer. And that right there on top of his crimes makes me go, whatever, buddy. (laughs) You know? Exactly. Which I'm a big fan of combining modalities. Right. Me too. But he wasn't. You know, I mean, that's been a big problem in the new age and spiritual community for a long time is this medical shaming of people that, you know, you shouldn't have to go to the doctor. You shouldn't take pharmaceuticals. They're evil. You shouldn't, you know, shit like that, that has kept people from medical care that they needed. And that's the problem. Right. There can surely be a marriage of the two, but you can't not have medical care that you need. Right. Right. Well, it just makes me question, like, how many of those people that came to him for healings didn't go for regular medical treatment? They went to him instead. Right. You know, right. what's wrong with both? I I agree. Mm-hmm. I am a big proponent of both. I would never say as, as a master energy healer, I've been practicing energy healing for more than 25 years, mm-hmm. and I would not ever say no don't do western medical treatment no do add energy healing to it yes Mm -hmm. but do you just rely only on no you do not no it has its limits of course everything look at this guy yeah you know unlimited resources tons of money didn't Mm -hmm. have to worry about how he was going to pay for it went right to the doctor and got his tumor removed and had chemo you guys yeah. yeah it's the hypocrisy for me yeah. it, it is you know and i mean it it doesn't even surprise me that he's a sexual predator because men mm-hmm. in situations like this become a sexual predator a lot or were to begin with they like that kind of power mm-hmm. they're creating situations in which they are in power and can abuse that power yeah. oh really 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 bothers me and Mm -hmm. i don't ever want this to feel like we're shaming anybody that went to john of god or believed in him no not at all no but to think that someone that had this kind of power and platform and money and this is how he used it you guys yeah no we're shaming john of god for christ's sake yeah just gross Mm -hmm. there are also a lot of other allegations against him that we can't 100 percent confirm but we want to talk about them because it's important to know you and know. you guys might have heard these. And yeah. so we did a little bit of homework because we thought that we would see these. There's there's just been a Netflix documentary about him. And we were Watch surprised. It. Excellent. Yeah. We were surprised that these uh, allegations weren't there because we had heard them. So we dug a little deeper down the rabbit hole and they're not substantiated. But because some of you guys have probably heard them, we're going to mention them. In 2019... So there was a woman, a Brazilian activist. She was, you know, on the Brazilian side of the Me Too movement. And her name uh, was, uh, good Lord, uh, Bittencourt, Sabrina Bittencourt. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of given credit as being the person who brought down John of God. She was on news stories. She was on a magazine cover. And she was receiving death threats from people. Like she was quite 
well hated over her being a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. uh, and that all happened in 2018. In 2019, in January, she released a six minute video claiming that she had uncovered more information about John of God that he and some other men also were baby farming. She claimed that they had a village that was full of young girls that they were impregnating. And when the babies were born, they were selling the babies to adoption agencies in the United States and in Australia and in Europe. And then immediately getting these young women pregnant again. And then when they were too uh, weak or unable to have any more babies, they were extinguishing them. They were killing them. Now, I'm really careful with this info because it is not substantiated. That it has not been. Uh, he's not been charged with anything. He's not been charged with anything. It has doesn't. And prosecutors did take that information and look into it. They haven't moved on it. It doesn't mean they won't at some point, but it also means that this may not have been true. But I'm telling you because this was in the news, and so it's worth talking about. And then, so that was in January of 2019. In February of 2019, there was uh, an announcement that Bittencourt had killed herself. And people, Sabrina Bittencourt, and people were not sure. People that really followed her weren't sure what to think. The stories didn't make sense. Her son at one point claimed that she died in Brazil. At another point, he claimed she died in Lebanon. Uh, reporters tried to confirm that through the embassy in Lebanon. They tried to get a hold of, and in Brazil, they tried to get a hold of death certificates. They couldn't. As of 2019, there was still big questions about whether Sabrina Bittencourt was actually dead or not, uh, or if she had just gone into hiding and wa walked off the map. There apparently had been an instance like that with her before and it turned out to not be true. So there are some questions there, but as the more I researched this, the more it started, uh, the articles were linking themselves to other conspiracy theories about uh, child trafficking that have proven to not be true. So huge grain of salt on that one, but because you probably heard about it, we're sharing that with you too. So there are some people that think that Sabrina Bittencourt was murdered. There are some people think that Sabrina Bittencourt is alive and well, and there are some people who think that she truly did kill herself. So I will let you be the judge of that. But that's the kind of pressure and danger that people who were speaking out against him were facing. Well, and that I think that's part of it that we have to, um, you know, bring attention to is that he was basically kind of running his own little mafia. Oh, yeah. You know, people did not speak out against him. He didn't mm -hmm. have, you know. The dude owned, what, 11 or 12 houses in Brazil? And he had like 20 cars. I mean, he had all this stuff. He had all this money. Um, when they searched, when the, when the police finally got a hold of him and they got the search warrants and they went out and they searched all these properties, they found cash everywhere. Because remember, this is a cash business. Mm -hmm that he's doing and they found money hidden in every single house shoved in drawers under mattresses mm -hmm. they found secret dungeony looking rooms in all of the houses i mean do we know the whole extent of the things that john of god has done and his acolytes yes because it wasn't exactly. just him some mm -hmm. of the victims claim that they were also sexually assaulted by his all his men his spirit yes. guides yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, in the documentary, they talk to a couple of the female spirit guides that are just hardcore to the bitter end supporters even now. Oh, yeah. Who swear none of this ever even happened. And I just think, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, what has happened to them? Right. But he, Come on. for a long 600 time. 600 women? Yeah. 600 women. Yeah. And that's what they kept saying. This could have never happened. This was happening right under our noses while we were right here. How could that, how could we have not have known if it were true? Oh boy. Okay. That's a long, that's a long answer that ends yeah. with, you need to look at yourself. And you didn't want to. 
Yeah, you didn't want to. You wanted to see him as this deity, you know, but he was untouchable for a really long time. He got away, he got away with this stuff. He started in 1978 in this little town and finally went to jail in 2018. Yes. Now, in the beginning, he was arrested a few times for, you know, various things. He actually was acquitted on sexual abuse charges a lot of years ago. Yeah. Uh, and that's when he made friends with the police yep. and started paying them. And it's believed that there was quite a bit of corruption in that little local police force that he basically owned the town. And he yeah. was paying everybody and he was paying them to, yep. you know, keep him safe. Yeah, it appears as though that is the case. And until some women really stood up and Sabrina Betancourt stood up and the prosecutor in the area, who is also a woman, mm -hmm. took notice of this and really stood up is when something right. finally happened. Well, when those first 12 women stood up and that story first broke, the prosecutor's office set up a tip line and email line. Yeah. And within something like 24 hours, they had received 200 contacts right. of women claiming that they had had something happen to them at yeah. his hands. And, it you know, a lot really of them fast. were not local. And so they went home like, well, what do I do now? How do I, who do I even tell, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they've been able to charge him at least with the cases that happened in Brazil. But it's a whole other deal if it's people who are from a different place. And mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, they finally. Well, and there have been a lot of statutes of limitations that have limited yes. the course of the prosecution as well. And, you know, there's been lots of legal things. And of course, you know, he's had no problem paying for good attorneys, you know. No, yeah. I mean, he's got tons of money. But, yeah. you know, at this point in his life, he's not getting out of jail. No, yeah. yeah, he'll die there at least he's off the streets and can't mm -hmm. hurt anybody else. You know, his mm -hmm. poor daughter finally spoke up about him and she just yeah. was, she's yeah. been terrified of him for most of yeah. her life. And sadly, this has been a really devastating thing to a lot of people in the metaphysical community that yeah. really believed in him and believed in, his work and, you know, did trust him and did see him as kind of a, a semi-deity of some sort. And, you know, to see this happen is heartbreaking for a lot of people who really thought that they knew him, knew his heart, knew what he was doing, and they didn't. Yeah. 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 And, you know, for us, I mean, yeah, we have a couple of crystals from him that friends have brought us back from Brazil, but we don't have any real connection, you know, no. but we know people who do. And, yeah. And that's tragic, you know? Yeah. We know people that have been there. Yeah. 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 It's, it is sad. It is. It's really sad for people who had amazing experiences with him too. Who, yeah. I mean, how wow. can you ever feel good about that again? Yeah. After all of this. Mm -hmm. It's awful. It is. It is awful. awful. And yeah. yeah, it's one reason why we wanted to cover it. You know, we're curious what you all's experiences are. If you mm -hmm. ha have a John of God experience of your own, you know, please let us know in the comments mm -hmm. our, on our YouTube channel. We'd like to know about that. Mm -hmm. Just hear from you because this is a person who impacted millions and millions of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somehow we have to kind of, make peace with something like that yeah yep but it for is sure it is you know for a long time working in crime and working as a social worker something that i know is that it's rare for someone to be all bad right most people are not all bad nor are they all good mm -hmm. and some very bad people do some good things and i feel like john of god is one of those people Mm -hmm. that clearly some of what he was doing was helpful or mm -hmm. people wouldn't have been going to him, you know? Right. He wouldn't have, I mean, even very skeptical people, you know, and, and like, well, I, I always kind of go back to Oprah, which by the way, mm -hmm. if you've ever heard conspiracy theories about Oprah being tied to child sex trafficking, this is the tie. Yeah. This is why. 
because mm -hmm. she um, had him on her show twice and made a big deal out of John of God. Mm -hmm. um, but I cannot imagine how she must feel about him now. Yeah. Uh, also, apparently, uh, Bill Clinton visited him mm -hmm. as well as others, uh, you know, and so, yeah. I, I can't imagine how any of them feel, you know, yeah. learning these things. But Oprah, she would have never had this person on her show, right? Put her reputation mm -hmm. on the line uh, for something pretty out there to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. If she didn't really believe in it, which she did. you know? Right. Well, and, you know, I, it comes back to this is why reporting and believing victims and supporting victims is so freaking important because mm -hmm. look how far this got. He was abusing his own daughter before he ever even started doing this stuff. Yeah. Or around the time he started doing this stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like if anybody had ever believed her, yep. none of the rest of this would have happened. Right. It's just a regularly, you know, we just see that over and over again that you know, if if we believe victims, then we stop predators from being long term offenders like this guy. Yep. Well, her always, you know, we've come a long way. We have a long way to go. Yeah, we sure do. Yep. Well, that is our first case of the week. We'd love to hear your comments about John of God. Um, please keep them civil. We know this is a little bit of a hard topic for some people, mm -hmm. but you can come comment on our YouTube channel on this video. If you're listening to the podcast, and that's one way you can communicate with us is just go to mm -hmm. True Crime Paranormal on YouTube and, and let us know what you think or if you have any yeah. thoughts or experiences with John O'Brien. Definitely. Yeah. Well, we have two more cases coming up this week plus our live stream on Wednesday, which is our case updates, and Thursday, which is the Psychic Hour, and we have a very special guest. Yay. Because Katie is going to be out of town taking her daughter to college. Yeah. My wife, Rhonda, is going to join us here on the Psychic Hour, and she awesome. is one of the original Psychic Sisters. So she is. She has been, she told me, she said, the next time Katie's not on the show, I want to be on the show with you. Oh my gosh, you guys are in for such a treat. You are going to love Rhonda. Yeah. She is she, so much fun. She is a lot of fun and she's excited to get and to she's a sage. She is she's a sage. She's a sage. Definitely. She, her wisdom is far reaching. Ah, yeah. I'm jealous True. I don't get to come play. Right? I know. So yeah. it's going to be fun. Also, so, this week, supposedly today at three o'clock, there is a hearing. With uh, for Chad and Lori, though it looks like maybe they're both closed, we're not entirely sure. We'll I would try Chad's to stream be closed. them. I'm pissed about this, but yeah, mm -hmm. we'll try to stream them today at 3 p.m. Mountain. We don't really know what's going to happen, but we will be here figuring it we out. Will. We'll we'll let yeah. you know one way or the other. And also, uh, I believe Wednesday evening there is an interview. Is it Dateline? I'm not it's sure. 48 Something. hours. 48 Hours has all of Chad's kids. In Chad Daybell's kids, yeah. Chad Daybell's kids. That has never happened. No. Nope. Uh, that's going to be interesting and I think really maddening and kind of sad. Yeah. But that's so coming. It is. And we'll be reporting on that as well. So. Yeah. Big week. Yeah. Very big week. We have a lot going on. So you want to yeah. keep an eye on us. Uh -huh. Well, you know it. We are True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Have a great night. Take care.